It's been two days since an 18-wheeler slammed into the back of Chief Deputy Waters' car, and he's still in critical condition tonight here at IU Methodist Hospital. As you can see, the crime scene here is still very active. Police have been out here all day. Crime scene investigators have been combing through the scene. A lot of people here in Beach Grove, even residents of this retirement community, can just walk across the street to the marsh. But if it closes, the nearest store will be more than a mile away. In that GoFundMe page, there's still a few thousand dollars short. Sources within IMPD telling us they are investigating the body in connection with the Angie Barlow case. The shelter is currently offering a $10 donation. It was at these apartments behind me that a woman said she heard someone breaking into her apartment. Police released very few details about the homicides last week, but today officials released new information. Right now, all that's left here is an angel in the tire tracks of Aaron Bailey's car. But in the community, the reality reaction to the newly opened investigation is mixed. Jerry said the teen with the gun came up to the driver's side window, pointed the gun at him and told him to get out of the car. As you can see, hundreds of shards of glass went flying through the back seat. Now, both officers say that bike patrols are something they don't get to do very often. The FBI and IMPD are continuing their own investigation. They wonder how Wells was able to allegedly prey on a nine year old child without anybody noticing and family is still waiting on the coroner to complete an autopsy to determine Kenley's exact cause of death. While well, Muncie Community Schools has gotten somewhat of a grip on their financial situation, they had a few critics along the way. So today, when IPS announced that school would be closing, concern began to grow about what effect that would have on an already troubled area of the city. Now, it's important to note that today's announcement was only a recommendation. The board will officially vote on the school closings at a meeting later in September. 17 year old girl is facing charges after police say she crashed her car into a home, killing two children inside. Flashing red and blue lights covered Madison Avenue in Southport this afternoon. A little after 2.30, police were dispatched to this home on reports of an officer shot. That police officer was Lieutenant Aaron Allen. You don't want to see the good guys get hurt. According to police, Allen was responding to a car that had crashed into the front yard of a home. The first thing I saw was just the car flip into the air and then just a bunch of like smoke and dirt and because after he crashed. When he attempted to help the two individuals trapped inside, 28-year-old Jason Brown pulled out a gun and shot Lieutenant Allen. And I just, I just can't believe that this would happen around here. It's just, it's tragic. Two other responding officers returned fire, striking one of the suspects. The other sustained non-life-threatening injuries. Lieutenant Allen was rushed to Eskenazi Hospital, where he later died. Lieutenant Allen was a hard, was a hard worker, and today was no different. He responded to a crash with urgency to preserve life. Tragically, his was lost. A memorial was started at the Southport Police Department. Residents coming to pay their respects, laying flowers and stuffed animals on the fallen officer's police cruiser. We all loved Officer Allen, a uh, very big community involved officer, and we're extremely grateful for his service. Lieutenant Allen was a six year veteran of the Southport Police and the department's first full time officer. He worked in Perry Township schools and he leaves behind a wife and two kids. Both suspects were taken into custody, and Brown is now preliminarily charged with murder. But residents say Brown took away more than just an officer today. He took away someone much, much closer. Not only have we lost an officer, but he's our friend, friend and family. In Southport, Max Lewis, 24-Hour News 8. A home intruder was fought off this past week, but not by the homeowner or a police officer. The hero in this situation? The family cat. Homeowner Cynthia Coots was watching TV around 12.30 in the morning with her cat Binky when a strange man came to her door. It was a bald-headed man I've never seen him before in my life. What an in. And I says, no, you're not going to get in here. The man claimed that people were trying to kill him and he wanted in. When Coots refused, the man stuck his hand through the screen window trying to get in. Well, that's when Binky got him the first time. 
Binky then ran off, but the intruder wasn't taking no for an answer. While Coots was on the phone with the police, the man reached his hand through the screen again, and according to Coots... That's when all the action started happening. Binky hadn't gone far. Next thing I knew, Binky did it again, and this time he held on to that guy. All I seen was fur going up. When police arrived on the scene, they arrested 41-year-old Earl Scruggs, and his hands were bitten so badly that an ambulance had to be called. Coots said Binky has never attacked anyone before, but she was thankful for what he did that night. I am very proud of him. He's my protector and he's my hero. In Indianapolis, Max Lewis, 24-Hour News 8.